This is the Green River Hunter, made by Dexter Russell of Southbridge, Massachusetts, or as I like to refer to it, an American Puko. If you're interested in hearing more about this knife, keep watching. All right, quickly, I purchased this knife for myself for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is I've always been interested in the design of this knife as well as its history, which I'll share with you in a moment. But I also, was also looking for another knife that I could share with you that would be a budget knife that would be very affordable, that maybe you could use for bushcraft, that is made in the USA. And this knife is made in the USA. So, um, I'll talk about its application to bushcraft in a minute, but I referred to it as an American Puko. And the reason I did, did should be obvious to some people, look at the handle shape. It's barrel shaped very much like old Pukos are. Uh, yes, it doesn't have a Puko shaped blade on it, but I'll talk about the blade design in a moment. But one thing that the other thing they do have in common is the fact that there is no finger guard at the handle where the blade begins because these knives were not designed for stabbing or pushing into wood or anything else. These are designed for hunting and fishing and game processing and cooking, and you don't need to stab in order to do that. So what makes this knife so good at doing those things? Well, the blade design, as you can see, it has quite a bit of forward sweep on the blade right up here. It does come to a point that has a clipboard, but a clip point, but if you'll notice, it's fairly broad here, and that allows for this sweep here, and still can be allowed to be turned upside down for entering into the abdomen of an animal with your finger underneath it to keep it from puncturing, puncturing entrails and still have a nice fine point on it. So all those features together give, make this a great game knife. And that's what it was intended for is as a game knife, sometimes referred to as a mountain man knife, but what it's not is a bushcraft knife because we expect of our bushcraft knives that they can, yes, prep meat up, cook with, but more importantly, to process wood. And this knife is not designed for processing wood. It can do some minor wood processing, but it is not a primary knife that I would choose to use to split wood or anything else with. Fine carving, maybe, but not most of the tasks we put in a, 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 wood, a bushcraft knife too. The other feature about this knife is that it is very thin, being 1 16th inch uh, carbon steel. It is 1095 steel, by the way, which is interesting. I didn't even know that that was available back in 1860 when these knives were first made. Yes, you heard, 1860s. The exact design has been around since that time, and these knives have been used to skin a lot of animals and process a lot of meat over the years. But 1095 steel, yes, but not hardened to the intensity that often new knives are. This was hardened to about a 55, 6, a 55, 57 on the Rockwell scale, below the 58 to 60 that we see most 1095 knives uh, hardened to. Uh, advantages and disadvantages? Well, one advantage is that it makes it much more flexible, which is great in a knife this thin, because if it wasn't flexible, it would likely snap. Um, but it does mean it's going to dull more quickly than the harder steels or the harder steel would. Uh, the, but then again, it's also easy to sharpen. So that's in fact what I have found. This will take an excellent edge. It doesn't last especially long, but it can be sharpened up very quickly, very easily in the field with minimal skill and minimal tools. So, and that's what you want from a knife you're going to be skinning a lot of animals or processing a lot of meat with. I used it a lot over the last year for food work or prep while I'm out cooking um, in the woods. I find it excellent for that. It slices so much better than any of my other knives, which are much wider, blunter tools, not dull, very sharp, but not intended for slicing meet with uh, as like this is obviously that's what this is okay so a couple of other comments on it that when i purchased it it did not come with a sheath i ended up making a leather sheath my first attempt at making a leather sheath i'll maybe i'll show you that another time that's not the point of the video so you can purchase them from some places with leather sheaths so if you don't want to make one yourself and you don't have one already then maybe you want to look at purchasing them but at the price for this i didn't want to spend any more on it so as you can see it is a full tang construction all the way through. It has walnut handles on it, three brass pins holding those walnut handles on. It has a cross check pattern on the sides and you can see even though it is a barrel shaped handle, it does have flat sides on it. I will tell you when it arrived, all the edges were sharp. It was cut, machined, uh, I don't mean sharp like cut you, but you know, sharp edges. 
How easy was this? A little bit of sandpaper, very lightly sanded over, and now it's just smooth all over the knife, and you don't mind moving it around. And that's one of the other aspects of a Puko knife, is that you can use it in any position. It even has ramps on the forward part of the scales here so that I can place my thumb in holding it in reverse position if I want to cut in this fashion. Yeah, it's, it's just nice. Now, the only thing I'll say about the handle in addition to is that it's small for me. Double XL hands, right? Most people will find this just fine for their purposes. For, and you know, it's just fine for the purposes I'm putting this in. I'm not using it for extended periods of time carving wood. I don't need a handle that fits perfectly in my hand that won't tire my hand out. For the purposes I'm using this, that's just fine. I, I just like a little bit bigger handle. Um, you know, this is still, still a, such a popular design because of what it does so well. And you may already be aware of this, but James Harris at Junkyard Fox used this as the foundation for a knife that he designed that is, is being produced. It's known as the Snake Eater. And if you're not familiar with that, then check out uh, Junkyard Fox and uh, look for Snake Eater and you'll find videos on it. James is a big... Uh, uh, catch and eat kind of a guy. He likes to catch and cook game and that means he prefers knives that are, are focused on game preparation like this knife is. Now his is an improved version, a little bit thicker of steel in the blade. I think it's 1 8th. The grind is kind of interesting. The handle's a little bit bigger. It's made of a modern steel, AEBL, I do believe. Um, you know, just a, a, a nicer design. But fundamentally, if you looked at them, there's no mistake in the heritage of his knife came directly from this knife. So it still works for its intended purpose. Now, um, one of the things we like doing with our knives is to start fires with them, to strike ferrocerium rods. Well, the back edge of this knife, or the spine of this knife, was not sharp enough to do that when I purchased it. But again, the softer steel made it especially easy to run a file down, and now it throws sparks as well as any knife in my collection. So you can do that. All right, wood processing. What can you do with this knife? Can you baton with it? Yes, as long as it's not thicker than your finger. I wouldn't try to baton anything any thicker than that, even though the blade is longer. The blade, by the way, is five inches in length. The overall length of the, of the knife is nine inches. And I'll put all this information in the video description, of course. Yes, you could do some light batoning with it, but I choose not to. Um, if I'm carrying this knife, which I have been for quite a while now, I always have something else with me, either a hatchet, more often another big knife, something else I'm testing out. And uh, yeah, so I don't have to rely on this for processing my wood. All the other tasks I do out here, this thing seems to excel at. It's very light on my hip. It's very quick in my hands. I use it for cooking. Well, I did pull a stick. Um, we had a hurricane go through here a little while ago. Most people would know about that. Hurricane Fiona, I believe it was. You'd think I would know better than that. In any case, uh, a lot of trees down here. I'm sitting in a swamp today, a lot of trees. So this is a piece of maple. It is green, but the tree is down. So I just cut a piece of green wood off because I just wanted to show you a little bit of its slicing capabilities and what you can do with this knife. Will it feather stick? Yes, very finely, again. I have other knives for doing that, but this knife will slice like almost no other knife I have. It just will take the bark off of this and go into the wood very quickly. Now, some of the tasks you do for uh, carving with a knife, you can still do with this, such as if I want to create a notch in the end of the knife and then push in doing this up in the air so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, I didn't do much of one, but I start the start of a figure seven notch right here. So notches are really good. This knife slides into the wood really easily. And with that fine tip, you can do some very fine work right out at the edge which some knives you just can't work with that way because the tip is too blunt. Made for strength, but not for finesse. Very, very fine curls can be made with this. So if you wanted to use it for feather sticking, you can. But as I say, it's, there are better knives for this, for that purpose. 
Okay, just not much of a demonstration, just to show you what this knife excels at and what its limitations are. So I guess the thing to close this video out is, would I recommend this as a bushcraft knife? No, I would not. It is not a bushcraft knife. There are other knives in the same ballpark as far as price goes that will give you more versatility as far as being able to process wood. One of the key features of any bushcraft knife. Would I recommend this as a hunting knife? Absolutely. And I think any hunter out there owes it to themselves to add this to their collection. I think you'll find that you'll use it much more often than you would think. It's just such a light, easy to use knife. What I'll continue to use it for, carrying on my belt because it's so light and portable as long as I have something else with me, and food prep make when I'm cooking out here in the woods. Cannot be beaten. I, I, this cannot be beaten because that thin metal, full flat grind, sharp edge, and blade shape, it is absolutely perfect for that. All right, intended to be a short video talking about the classic Green River Hunter from Dexter Russell. A whole lot of history, a great knife for its intended purposes. Yeah, why don't you share your thoughts on this knife if you have one in your collection, what your thoughts are. If you have any questions about it, share those with me as well in the comments section. Again, I'll give you information that I have on this. Where I purchased mine was for, through a Canadian company, so I don't have any other sources for it, but I will give you the where I purchased mine. And if you have any other information you want to share with us, then please do. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.